Oh, there's more showing up here. Every time I turn around. Well, I saw your pattern. You're just putting them on top, and I was like, oh no, I'm not going to do that. Yep. Results in low wages for third world countries. Number two, third world citizens are being exploited. And number three, fashion industries and impact is causing negative effects to the environment. So, I want to start off by saying that fast fashion is actually more beneficial than detrimental to third world countries. And my justification for this is that we are not looking at this from the third world country citizens' views. And I want to give the definition of ethnocentrism as I'll be using that in the speech. And it's the evaluation of other cultures according to preconceptions originating in the standards and customs of one own culture. So for the first claim, fast fashion is driven consumerism results in low wages for third world countries. I think that for this, low wage is better than no wage. Yes, the wages are often less than $3 a day, like Bernadette said, which seems little to us, but to those in third world countries, it can be worth a lot. Just look at the $1 menu at McDonald's. Also, in the Chandy article of Future of Work, Future of Work in the Developing World, um, in the developing world, it entails moving people into being more productive. Also, according to Fields, poverty, um, Fields article, poverty and low earnings in the developing world, many people are living on a dollar a day. So on to my second claim, second point. Third world citizens are being exploited, but we can't say they're being used in a bad way. Because according to the charts related to the latest by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, they said that not all microenterprise operators and family workers in third world countries are doing such work involuntarily. So they have their own choices, and they are choosing to do this. And also, low-skilled jobs create more chances for people in third world countries to work and gain money. Manufacturing has driven economic growth in many countries. And some industries, such as the fast fashion, uh, remain feasible entry points for low-skilled employment. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, as I stated before, over 5 million people are unemployed and they need these low-skilled jobs that are created by fast fashion. Also, Bernadette stated that child labor is being used. However, according to Fields' article, Poverty and Low Earnings in the Developing World, being employed means generating an income. Those that are not employed are assumed to be idle. And also, child labor is used, but how else can children help? It is ethnocentric of us to judge child labor. And in some countries, child labor is considered normal, and that's how they help. And sometimes, school is not accessible. According to Nest Miguel, um, he stated that Children need money for basic school items. So if third world country citizens don't have jobs, they can't make money and children can't go to school. And also, a girl stated that school was too far away from my home so that my parents were afraid to let me go there all by myself. So how else, what else would children do at home? They can just help by working and creating money. On to my last claim on fashion's industry's impact is causing negative effects to the environment. There actually is no real link to fast fashion. She's, 
gave a lot of points about um, waste being um, created and non-biodegradable <coughs> non uh, substances that are made, but um, every industry causes these negative effects to the environment, whether the impact be big, small, or big. And this is not just happening in third world countries. If we stop fast fashion in third world countries, the effects will just go elsewhere, like India or China. And also, people who work in countries like China or India also go to through the same hazardous procedures as those in third world countries. So, summing up, um, I wanted to say that fast fashion actually helps more than it degrades. question. Don't worry about it. It was just a smart-ass comment on my part. <laughs> um, uh, look, everything's very well organized. You have clear claims that you're presenting. I thought you had good evidence that you presented on a couple of the points. Uh, the argument about uh, ethnocentricity is an interesting idea. It's, a, it's definitely a perspective that uh, suggests maybe a value claim is being made here and that the, ad, the advocate is looking at it from uh, a perspective that is not uh, complete or whole, that, that's okay. I do think that there's a, 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 a reference that you could be making to the first point, which is you know, back to the same argument that you were making, that no, uh, low wage is better than no wage, and uh, that a number of people, if they weren't working, would be struggling with other issues in front of them. And you know, that, 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 I think, is one of the contrasting things that's missing here. Uh, people are always faced with making a choice. The question is, what choice do you make? And is this choice one that's better than some other choice? And the way to show that this choice is better is maybe to show what the alternative is. So starvation, uh, homelessness, uh, having to live in a different kind of circumstance. I think you could probably use that a little bit more. And that might have been, that might have been more useful to you than the ethnocentric argument, although the ethnocentrism, I thought, was okay as well. Um, the, uh, the idea that this work would continue someplace else, uh, that's, that's a quasi-policy kind of argument suggesting that you know, maybe the advocate is suggesting that we do something about this. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know that their choice would be to increase wages. I, maybe it would be to increase prices. It's not quite clear to me how how this is going to be addressed, and therefore what why that w issue would be relevant. Um, the the challenge on the environment, I think that that's that's the place where the evidence that you have is the least applicable here. Everything else, I think, is definitely applicable here. It's mostly a press about, you know whether or not the evidence that the advocate's talking about is unique to fast fashion or whether it's any kind of manufacturing that produces these harms. That's a good, reasonable press. It's the kind of thing that you could do almost immediately after the argument that was presented. All right, I'm going to stop there. <laughs>